somebody's got to talk. Let them put the pressure on each other. I don't care, but we want them charged in these other cases. So this all happened New Year's Day, right? New Year's Day. It happened about uh, 5, 6 in the morning. Uh, some people cut the locks off our trailers and stole them out of our parking lot. These are not just any kind of trailer. No, it's a pretty big uh, dual 500 gallon smoker trailer valued at about $30,000. Uh, it's about an 8,000 pound rig. What'd you think when you saw they had been stolen? Uh, just uh, sick, sick. It's like, you know, we hadn't even had it a year. And uh, just sick to my stomach that somebody would do that. You got video of them? Yeah, we have video of them committing the crime, sawing the locks off of it and hooking up and taking off with it. So what do you think? Uh, I just wanted it back. Uh, uh, you know, fortunately we had it outfitted with GPS trackers, so I just wanted to find it as soon as we could. You found it? Tell yeah. me where. Yeah, we found it within four hours, just about a, a couple of miles from here in the in a uh, empty lot next to a local cafe. So what you th do you, you know, think when you found it at that point? Uh, just looking around, kind of just freaked out, looking around for people that might have been watching me, but uh, called the police right away to get them out. And uh, it looked like it had just been stashed, like somebody was gonna return for it. So I had a hunch that they would be back to try to pick it up. You didn't give up? No, no, uh, that was just the beginning of it. Uh, you know, I wanted somebody to pay for the crime. Uh, so that's that's when the wild chase started. Tell me about this wild chase you've been on. Yeah, so uh, like I said, we had a hunch that somebody would come back for the trailer. So after the police released custody of the trailer back to us, we, we, we got it locked up in storage, nice and secure. And then uh, we talked to some local business owners that allowed us to mount cameras in the area just in case our uh, suspects returned. And uh, we had those cameras up within five to six hours after we recovered our trailer. What'd you see on them? Uh, for the first few days, nothing. Just uh, you know, activity of the, the employees of the restaurant coming out to the field, taking trash out, things like that. Uh, was able to kind of tell who owned the restaurant and saw them move their vehicles around. Didn't really think anything of it. I was like, okay, maybe maybe it's a dead end here. It wasn't a dead end. No, wasn't a dead end. Uh, a, another week passes by, I think around January 13th. Uh, I see the owner of the cafe pull up, followed by our suspect white van at the same time. They exit their vehicles and go in the cafe together for about 15 minutes. Uh, I, I'm freaking out at this point. I'm like, okay, what do we got going on here? Why is he with the owner of the restaurant? That's my suspect, that's my white van, is, is the owner of the restaurant involved. It sounds like the real key to all of this that connects what happened to you, connects what happened to Landry, connects what happened to Grease Monkey, right. is one distinctive vehicle. One distinctive white van. It's got very distinctive peel patterns on both sides of the vehicle, and it's got a hand-painted white grill. It's not like any other van out there. And that's what that's what tied it all together. This same van appears in all these thefts and all the security video. Huh. So eventually you, you look at this van outside of this cafe, you're watching the video of how they're all interacting, right. where they're going, when they're coming, and you're convinced this cafe is in on it. The owner knows about this. Yeah, I'm convinced that the owner has to be in on it. There's been, there were three to four occasions where that white van pulls up before the restaurants ever open. Uh, the occupant, the driver of that van, and the restaurant owner go inside the cafe uh, for several minutes at a time. At one point, the driver comes out with keys and moves the owner's vehicle and starts loading it with appliances. So what do you think when you see another small business? Yeah, it's just it's disgusting. I mean, you know, we're in, we're in a tough industry. There's restaurants in Fort Worth closing every single day. And to have somebody in the same industry that's possibly connected with our theft. It, it, yeah, it's a sinking feeling in your stomach. You got your van, your trailer back. Um, you found out yesterday? We found out yesterday, I got a call from our detective that there was an arrest in the case. Now the arrest wasn't in our trailer case, but it was another trailer theft with the same suspect. Because this is all, like once you started posting, people started coming out of the woodwork. Practically. Right, right. So we took to our social media pages, we took to our Instagram, which we've got just under 40,000 followers. That was a last ditch effort for me to get information, to get to get our information out to the public to say, be aware, this is what's going on, this is the van we're looking for. 
within within a few days we started getting phone calls from other businesses saying that we suspect the same white van in our theft. People start sending me their security video. Fortunately, a young man calls me and said, hey, this same van stole our trailer back in October and I know where the guy lives and I've got pictures of his van in his driveway. And you see those pictures that Landry's got and you see your surveillance video. Any doubt in your mind? That this Not is a single doubt, zero doubt that this is the same guy. Same height, same weight, same facial features, same van, same markings, everything. How do you feel now that he's been arrested? Uh, a little bit better that we know who he is, a little bit better that there's a, there's a name to the face, uh, but he's still not charged in our case. He's still not charged in several cases, even though we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it all counts when it comes to the courtroom, and that's where the police say they don't have enough right now. This isn't over. It's not over, it's not over. We have proven by video that the cafe owner knows this gentleman. He deals with this gentleman on several occasions. You don't hand your vehicle keys over to somebody you don't know to load your vehicle with items. Uh, he knows who it is. Somebody's got to talk. Let them put the pressure on each other. I don't care, but we want them charged in these other cases. You think there are others? We know about these three. There's got to be more. These are just ones we know about. Uh, you know, not only trailers, appliances are probably involved. Who knows what else they're into? Um, but there's more. What else from your perspective, Chris, do you think folks should know? Uh, just be aware, you know, watch out for your neighbor, not just yourself, but your neighbor. You never know when it's gonna come around and affect you. Uh, so we just gotta watch out for each other, you know, especially the restaurant community here in Fort Worth. Uh, we know what everybody else is going through. So if I can help anybody out, that's what I'm here to do. Uh, like I said, my employees are extremely important to me. It's their livelihood too. Uh, watch out for your neighbor, lend a hand. It, it, it doesn't take much. Now I've invested a lot of time in this investigation. I'm ready to get some sleep, uh, but that's okay. You know, somebody's got to pay for what they did. They just can't feel free to go around and do this. Yeah, why have you spent so much time on this? Why yeah. has this been something that you think is just... just... Just kind of obsessed that barbecue is my livelihood. They took my pit. They took my main tool that I use to feed people. Uh, the main tool that I use to pay my bills, the main tool that my employees use to pay their bills. It was personal. You know, really just the traffic that went through the guy's house. All kinds of shady stuff. Showing up to the supposed chop house, the chop shop. That was just, yeah, I was like, well, what else are we on to now? Um, you know, a little bit of fear at that time because it was on a dead end street. I was like, if I get stuck down that street, that may be it for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, just, just seeing the amount of traffic that would go through there. Uh, the different characters that would go through there, you know, suspected drug deals that would go through there. Would, uh, were you at all surprised? I mean, when you posted this to your Instagram and said, hey, does anybody see this, know anything about this, were you at all surprised that at the number of other trailers that have been I was, taken? I was surprised at the number of trailers and that nothing had been done about it. I was surprised that there was such clear-cut video evidence from October and nothing was done about it. There was no arrest in the case yet. Uh, had he been arrested in October, we wouldn't have been here in January going through this. Uh, not only myself, but the other businesses, the other uh, Grease Monkey, the Doggy Digs that had their trailer stolen. Those guys wouldn't have had to go through that had something been done in that case. And there was clear-cut video of the suspect. And there's still another suspect out there. There's clear-cut video of that guy as well, his helper. Uh, but no arrest there.